welcome to church. Amen. Amen. Are you happy to be here today? Yes. Are you ready to go? Yes. Are you ready to start the week? Amen. So you know what? We are going to stand and we are going to give God some praise. Let's Amen. shout to the Lord. Shout with joy. Come on, shout with joy to the Lord.
right way. Let only your will be done, O oh God, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a big round of applause. Amen. 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 for the opportunity to stand here to preach the word. So thank you. Thank you, Pastor Peter, Pastor Princess, and thank you, Praise and Worship team. You guys are doing fantastic work. Yes. Okay. So can we stand, please, if you don't mind? I'd like to to read the Bible, John chapter 11. If you have your Bible, let's read together as a family. For young people that don't usually read the Bible, this is your opportunity to read the Bible. You should have it on your phone or on the screen. John chapter 11, from verse 1 to 6, and then we'll read 17 to 23. Are we ready? So we are reading together. Um, NIV version, in case you have a different version. Mine is NIV. Everyone read like you're the only one in the room. <laughs> read like this is your time to read the Bible. Can we go together, everyone? Yeah. Go. Now the man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, who is called the Lazarus, now lay sick. Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may glorify through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed there for two more days, and then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judah. Okay, can we go to verse 17? Everyone from 17 to 23. Let's go. Go. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. 23. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Father, our hearts are open to hear from you. We pray, O oh God, that you minister your word to us. That at the end, your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sit down, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for reading the Bible. Um, a very wonderful story we've read. This is our case study today. And we'll use it to talk about the title, God is Never Late. 
speak, speak to the person next to you and say, God is never late. Some of us came to church late today, but God is never late. Can you say that again? Okay, so the place we read talked about a young man, Lazarus, who was sick. And before I start talking about Lazarus being sick, I want to say some things. One of the things I want to say is life is challenging, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. Life is challenging whether you're born again or not born again. Whether you're young, you're old, you're married or single, life is challenging. I also want to say that being born again does not protect you from the challenges of life. The good things happen to bad people and good things happen to good people. If you look at it the other way, Good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people, and bad things happen to good people. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Now, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse um, 45, the Bible says he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Yes. Now that I'm born again, does not mean um, I wouldn't have issues or deal with the high rate of inflation happening in the UK. Have you gone to the shop lately? Things are expensive. So the same market we go to, whether you're born again or not, or you're, you don't even believe in God. I'm born again, but I lost my job. Someone is saying, I'm born again. I'm having issues in my relationship. I'm born again, but I've had heartbreak. And if you flip it on the other side, someone is not, doesn't believe in God, enjoying a good life, business is working, there are money, and you're wondering, what is the issue? Okay? Now, if we relate that to Lazarus and Mary and Martha, you will assume that when we have challenges as believers, we have a solution to it. The problem is not that we are not going to face challenges. The issue is, how does God respond to our challenges? We expect that when we have challenges, the primary thing to do is kneel and pray, add faith to your prayer, then you will have solution. We can say to this mountain, be moved and go to the other side by faith. If you have faith as Little as the mustard seed, yes. you can do this. Even if you don't have faith, we've read the Bible to know that Jesus moved against people's unbelief. One man came to Jesus and said, my son is dying. Can you please help him to be healed? Jesus said, you have faith. He said, I have faith, but help my unbelief. Yes. And Jesus moved away from his unbelief and healed the boy. So we know that prayer is the solution, the, the um, strategy to create solution when we have problems. Am I communicating? Yes. Yeah. So my problem is not that there are challenges. I know I'll face challenges. And I know that I have a solution to the problem. This is exactly the case of Lazarus, uh, Mary and Martha, because their brother was sick. And it wasn't an issue for them because they know if this guy is sick, send the word to Jesus. Jesus has the capacity to heal. And they've seen him heal people. He has healed before. The leper he healed. Um, You can tell of different stories of Jesus doing miracles. So it wasn't a problem. There are problems you have, you know. It's not even a problem. Some problems don't need prayer. Some problems don't need prayer and fasting. Some need prayer. Some don't need prayer and fasting. For instance, if I have need for 100 pounds, do I need to pray? Yes, no. Some will say, yes, pray for everything. But I don't need to pray because if I don't have it and my wife has it, it's simple. Honey, can you give me 100 pounds? Very simple. That's the issue. So if I have a problem and I have a friend who can give me the money, I don't need to pray. Phone call, 
Give me 100 pounds. If he's rich, he will give me the money. And that's what happened to Lazarus, um, Mary, and Martha. Because they have a friend. His name is Jesus. He's been healing people who didn't even care about him. Who didn't even know anything about him. And the Bible was careful, whoever wrote this, John was careful to give us a description of the Mary we are talking about. It's not a random Mary. This is Mary, yes. the worshiper. Yes. This is Mary who broke the alabaster box of oil and poured it on the feet of Jesus and used her hair to wipe his feet. Goodness. This is Mary and Martha, those who serve the Lord. Do you know, if you read the Bible, you understand that. Mary and Martha, their house was a place where Jesus and his disciples, once in a while, you know, once in a while, if you visit Pastor Peter and Princess, you will be sure that you will have some food to eat. Yeah. Now, if you visit us, at least you will, re you will eat jello fries. <laughs> My wife is good at that. So, this is someone... They don't even have to give Mary and Martha um, notice to say, we are coming to your house. Jesus will stroll from Jerusalem. He will go to Bethany because he's just two miles away and have some food. They, they talk, preach the word, and enjoy their company. They served the Lord. They were worshippers. And for them, that was a reason. Even if Jesus would not heal because some people came to jesus a woman came to him and said um, my daughter is ill heal her and jesus said to her we don't give the bread the things that are for children to people who are not part of the system and the woman said you can even if we don't eat the bread we can eat the crumbs okay and jesus said your faith has made you whole and the daughter was healed and look at these people. They have a relationship with Jesus. So even if for no other reason for them to have healing for the brother, they were worshippers. They deserve it. Am I right? Yes. And the Bible tells us that for them, their challenges or their deceitness was not the issue. When they sent a word to Jesus, oh, Jesus is two miles away. Let him come and do what he has been doing. Doesn't, it's not going to stress him to bring healing. What did the Bible say? Jesus stayed two more days where he was. We'll get into that later. Now, I'm saying to you that the problem is not that the solution is not there. The solution is there, which is prayer as believers. But what do you do? When you've tried what you know what to do and it's not working. What do you do when you've prayed in faith and nothing is happening? Our perception of God's response to our challenges is the key issue. And I think for these people, they were not really moved because their brother was sick until he died. Jesus did not bother. He died. Okay, Lazarus is dead. It's still not a big problem because Jesus can raise people from the dead. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus was moving in Luke chapter 7. I hope I'm right. Luke chapter 7, verse um, 11 and 17. Jesus was moving and he saw a woman mourning. And they were all moving to bury her son. The Bible said the woman um, was a widow. And what did Jesus do? He was moved by the situation. And he touched the coffin the young man came back to life. That is Jesus we are talking about. Jesus that went to uh, Jairus, who had a daughter who was dead, and he prayed for her, and she came back to life. So for them, it wasn't really a problem. Because he can actually come and raise Lazarus back to life. 
But the Bible says that Jesus took his time, stayed there until he died, until he was buried. And you know the thing? The Jews believe that if someone dies for three days, the spirit is still hovering around. So there is the potential of the person coming back to life. But Jesus stayed until it was four days. All hope gone. I want you to picture that. It has come to the point of no return. For these people, it wasn't about Jesus not responding. If Jesus was human, they would understand because obviously, as human, you can tell me how to deal with the disappointment of people. Because we have friends who have disappointed us, family members who have disappointed us. You've spent time, you've spent resources, you've done the best you can to be there for them, and now Jesus, we need you. He disappointed them. So, everyone in this room, you must have had the experience of disappointment. Marriage and your husband or wife disappointed you. In love, <laughs> I'm going to get married to you one year later, disappointed you. Anyone like that, don't raise your hand. <laughs> and I can deal with human disappointment. You gave loan to someone. I will pay you back a month, two months. In fact, they call you without even mentioning that you gave them money. <laughs> disappointment. Yeah. You can, don't tell me it's your experience. I know how it feels. People have felt disappointed. So I know how to deal with human disappointment, which is to moderate my expectation from people. Because human beings are limited in their capacity. Yes. Human beings are imperfect. Yes. And we too have the vulnerability or potential to disappoint. Yes. So don't tell me you've never been a child who disappointed your parents. I have disappointed my parents. Because they've had expectations from me, high expectations that I didn't meet. And they felt disappointed. Even my wife sitting here could say that I've disappointed once in a while. Because I have limited capacity to fulfill all I need. And I'm not perfect. So even as parents, we've disappointed our children. And I am trusting God that my disappointment to my son will not be too much. Because when he becomes a teenager, I will start dealing with issues around values. Should I do this or do that? And I'm saying, no, you can't do that. He will feel disappointed. That is the way of life. I know how to deal with human disappointment. But how do I deal with God's disappointment? I know we are religious. We don't know we are not religious. We are spiritual. And we don't want to say that God can disappoint. Yes, God cannot disappoint, but we can feel disappointed yeah. by God. Yeah. Because I felt disappointed by God. I don't know about you, but I have to be truthful to you that I have felt disappointed by God. Even though I didn't tell God you disappointed me, but that feeling was there. Yeah. When you ask God, but why? That's a feeling of disappointment. When you feel, God, you have the capacity. I'm not saying, if it's human, I know human, we don't have the capacity. But this is God who has all power to do a snap of his finger, the solution is there, but he chooses not to respond to my issue. That's disappointment. I know how it feels like to lose someone you love. My sister-in-law, just one morning, had a phone call. She had a heart attack, dead. Within one hour, someone I saw a week before I came to the UK, one hour, everything was happening like a movie, and she died. And we said, well, our God can raise the dead. Call all the men of God. Let's pray. She was a good woman. My brother is a minister. They took her to church, brought all the evangelists, everybody was praying. 
You know how Africans, we can pray? <laughs> we prayed and prayed. My wife and I watched videos of people who gave testimony of how God brought their, their wounds back to life. We were believing it's going to happen. God, he said it. One day, two days, three days, gone. I felt disappointed. I said, God, why? How can you do this? No sign, he just died. Why? Maybe I'm the only one who has felt this way. <coughs> Martha and Mary felt disappointed. It's in the Bible. I'll tell you how we can prove that they felt disappointed. I know what it feels like to be married. We were saying, you know, honey, we are not going to have children. One day, let's have time to say, no, let's have these children. From day one, let's start. <laughs> and then we started. One year, nothing is happening. No show. What? Pressure. Let's go and meet the doctors and see what's wrong with the two of you. And we went to hospital, did everything. The, the pressure from family. Nothing. So, you know what? Let's come to the UK. They have. The best facilities in the UK. In the UK, one year, two years, three years, nothing. Pressure. External, internal pressure. You open social media, your friends are, you know, showing you God has done it again. <laughs> and you're wondering. When will my turn yeah. come? Yeah. Yeah. And nothing is happening. Yeah. If, if it was medical problem, you say, okay, no one, let's deal with this medical problem. And it's, they are telling you there is nothing wrong with you. Then what is wrong with us? <laughs> you do what you have to do. It become, it, what you're doing is now an obligation because you just have to do it. <laughs> Even when you don't feel like doing it, you count the counts and do you know, pressure until five years, nothing. Thank God there is something now. <laughs> <laughs> My point is that at that point, you're asking God, I'm not Abraham. I don't have that patience of Abraham. <laughs> I am gospel. <laughs> you pray and you fast and pray. It's not happening. But I have friends who are telling me, they are telling me, hey, our issue is that I've had four children. I don't even know how to stop. This last one was a mistake. And you're wondering. <laughs> And in your heart, you know it's not because you sinned. It's not because you have a relationship with God. Amen. So why is my case different? Amen. God, this is disappointment. I don't know what else to call it. People say to you, don't question God. Don't question God. He's God. He knows everything. Don't question him. Who are you to question God? But there's a difference between questioning God and asking God questions. Amen. <laughs> God is my father. I need to ask him, what's going on here? Amen. You can't have the capacity. My problem is, he has the capacity. Yeah. You can't have the capacity and you leave me stranded yeah. when you can just do this. Mm -hmm. What kind of friend is Jesus? That would see the friends. The Bible said, they, they sent a word to him and said, Lazarus, the one you loved, the one you loved, is sick. He took his time, allowed the one he loved to die, and he did not even show for the funeral. 
it's bad enough that you didn't come when he was ill, but you were there, we did all the funeral, we mourned, you never even sent a word to say, sorry, I am coming. No, he didn't do that. He took his time, and he was not doing any miracle there. Read the Bible. He wasn't doing anything. He was just chilling. <laughs> they were really disappointed. And some of us have been disappointed. Yes. And this morning, we are going to tell God that, you see that disappointment? You need to deal with it. Yeah, because he's our God. We are going to do that this morning. Because we know if, if he has the capacity and he's willing, that's the killing part. Yeah. Because if you read the Bible in um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, a leper came to Jesus and said, um, Master, I am ill, I have leprosy. I know that if you are willing, you can make me whole. Yeah. And Jesus said, I am willing, therefore, behold. Amen. So I know he is willing and he has the capacity. The problem now, the, the point of disappointment is, why are you taking time to do what you're willing to do and what you have the capacity to do? And if you read the Bible in verse Six. When Martha heard that um, Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. Okay, verse 20, sorry about that. But Mary stayed at home. Verse 20, mm -hmm. Mary stayed at home. This was Mary that when she hears about Jesus, she's running to meet Jesus. In fact, when Jesus was preaching, Martha was serving and Mary was, was all over Jesus, you know. She stayed at home. Why? Because she was angry with Jesus. You see, feeling disappointed with God can make you run away from God. It can make your prayer life dwindle because you feel, what's the point? What's the point of prayer when I have prayed and nothing is happening? So she felt disappointed. And I will tell you, young people in the house, there is the possibility of you feeling disappointed with God in the future if you don't have a balance about how God responds to life challenges. If you have the concept of God as the one who is every problem, pray, solution, the way you see it, not the way he sees it, you will feel disappointed with God. And you might have that tendency to lose your faith. This is what atheists will come to you and say, if God is powerful, why is it that people are dying all over the world, starvation? Why would God do the miracles and bring solutions to life issues? The same thing happened to Mary. She lost it. She stayed at home. But then that's one concept of feeling disappointed with God where you run away from God. You hide from God. You moderate your expectation. You don't pray with faith anymore because you felt you've been disappointed enough. The sickness is there. Well, let's leave it there. If God wants to heal it, it's going to heal me. So you don't pray. I believe that this sickness you're going because you don't want to be disappointed. You have issues. You keep it there. You, you're not as close to God as you used to. This is what happened to Mary. And then if you read to 21, um, Martha went to Jesus. What did she say? If you have been here, my brother would not have died. Blame came. Martha began to blame God. So this is what happened. When you feel disappointed with God, either you run away from God or you start blaming God. God, you're the reason I'm in sin. God, you're the reason my life has turned out the way it is. In fact, if you did what you were supposed to do, I wouldn't be where I am now. God, it is you. It is your problem. I know a woman who came to me and said, but I did not do what others did before I got married. Why did my marriage end in divorce? I said, it's not God's fault. You made your choice, either your choice or the choice of the person you got married to, 
resulted to the problem in your marriage. It's not God. But she's blaming God because she felt she was a church girl. Do you understand my point? So she felt as a believer, God's responsibility is to shield you from life issues. But it doesn't happen that way. That's why I started by telling you that challenges happen to believers and all everybody is faced with challenges. But the point is God is never late. God is never late. So she felt disappointed. Both of them felt disappointed. Then the next part talks about what Jesus did. Jesus said to Martha, Martha said to um, Mary, if you read the story down, I don't want her to go there. Martha said to Mary, when Jesus had said, your brother will rise again, Martha went to Mary and said, the Lord is calling you. And Mary decided to walk and meet the Lord. Why? Because if you read verse uh, 42, the Bible says that Mary decided to meet with the Lord. Okay? And that is exactly what Jesus is doing. You know, he's seeking us to come to him. He's seeking those who have been disappointed. And I've got good news for you. If you felt disappointed with God, Jesus is also seeking out for you. Amen. That is why we need to, this morning, tell him about our disappointment. Amen. So if you read verse 29, after she had said this to Jesus, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. He said, the teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary had this, she got up quickly and went to him. Is there anyone who has felt disappointed with God? I'm not saying you should raise your hand. Speak to the Lord. Amen. Because Jesus Amen. is calling you. Amen. The reason he's calling you is that if Jesus is in the room, yes. all you need is for him to show up. Amen. If Jesus has shown up, it means that there is going to be a solution to the problem. That is why he said to Martha, your brother will rise again. I don't know. We have everyone in the room. We have our Lazarus. Everyone here has your Lazarus. Lazarus to me means that problem that refuses to go away. That issue that you have prayed to God to deal with. And it seems like God is not responding within your own timing. That's your Lazarus. But the good news is that Jesus can deal with hopeless situations. Amen. Jesus can deal with whatever circumstance yes. you are faced with. Amen. The first point of it is that you need to, it's better you blame him for your disappointment rather than walking away from God. Amen. It's better you ask questions of God to say, Jesus, why is this happening? And he never for once blamed Martha. He never for once blamed Mary. All he said is, do you believe? Amen. This morning I'm putting that question to you. Yes. Do you believe? Yes. Do you believe that God is never late? Amen. Amen. Two things I want to close with. Number one is, Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. Amen. This sickness is unto God's glory. Yes. Amen. Did you see that in your Bible? Yes. So whatever circumstance you're going through yeah. that looks like God has taken so much time to respond yeah. according to your timing because God's timing is different from your timing. The Bible says that a day is like a thousand years before God and in a thousand years like a day before him. So it's according to your timing, you feel disappointed because God is now behaving like other human beings who can disappoint. The truth of the matter is that God is never Amen. late. Amen. In his own time, whatever you're going through will work out to his glory. Amen. Even, if, even if there is no turnaround, you see, if you have this perception, it's going to help you not to feel disappointed with God. Yes. 
Because you know that the challenges you're going through is to God's glory. The Bible says, count it all joy when you pass diverse trials. I don't want to use the word temptation. You pass through diverse tribulations. Count it joy. How do you count it joy? Because you know, is working for God's glory. Is working for God's glory. So that unbelievers look at you. They expect you to cry and mourn because of your situation. But you're smiling and excited. And they're wondering, what is wrong with you? What kind of, what is the secret? And you tell them, because I believe in God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Even though I am going through tough times, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You don't expect me to die because of what I'm going through. It's not unto death. Is working out for God's glory. Amen. And secondly, the Bible says that all things work together for good to them that love God. All things, not the good things, all. Even the bad, the good, the ugly. All things work together for good to them that love God. Mary and Martha love God. But the death of their brother Lazarus worked together for their good. All things. It might look like a dead end. The Bible says... That Jesus came to the point and said, where have you buried this young man? And Jesus is saying to you today, where have you buried your disappointments? Where have you buried your Lazarus? Where have you buried that issue that seems impossible? Where have you buried it? God wants you to open your heart. I know you have felt disappointed by people and it has become a burden to you. Things have happened in your life and you have buried that pain, you buried it somewhere. And Jesus is saying to you, where have you buried it? It's time for us to excavate the grave today and begin to pull out every Lazarus because Jesus is in the room. I don't know if you know. Jesus is in the room. That issue, just, just give it to Jesus because I see him calling out that case, calling out that problem. He's saying, Lazarus, come out of the grave. I want everyone to decree and declare that every Lazarus in your life come out of the grave. Enough of it. Every issue that you felt disappointed with is time for you to call it out. I want everyone to stand on your feet. In case you don't have a Lazarus, you can sit down. But my Lazarus could be that I have a wayward child. My Lazarus could be that my life is not working the way it should work. My Lazarus could be that things are not really, really, I've prayed and prayed and prayed, it's not happening. I need you to open your mouth because you are the vessel of the Lord. Speak to that Lazarus in your life. Call it out. Call it back to life. I need you to speak whatever it is. Jesus is in the room. Jesus is in the room. Jesus is in the room. Every issue, call it, call it by his name. I can hear you speak to God about that issue. God is never late. It could be a hurt, emotional hurt, emotional pain. God is in the room. Jesus is in the room. He's never late. That death is unto God's glory. In Jesus' name. I don't know um, anyone here who feels that maybe your, your, your life has been, you, you've lived in bondage, you've lived in disappointment, you, you've lived you know that your spiritual life is not what it needs to be. And you're asking that Jesus will touch you again. You need life. You need life. You need, it's not, maybe not, not necessarily that you're not born again, but there is no life. You look around you, it seems everything is dead. Can you just signify by raising your hand? Maybe you can walk out. I don't know. Maybe you can let us pray wherever you are. And if you're here, you want to give your life to Christ as well. 
and you want the life of Jesus to come into your life. Just the way he, he called Lazarus and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he came back to life. I, maybe because of people, you don't want to raise your hand. But I just want you to make that commitment now. Maybe everyone, if you, if you have a Lazarus in your life, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I know I've got Lazarus in my life. And I'm raising my hand. And I'm saying, Jesus. And I'm saying, Jesus. Take away this this issue. I'm saying Jesus. Rebo Sita Libraha. And I'm saying Jesus. It looks hopeless, but Jesus. Jesus, call forth my Lazarus. I need him back to life. Raise your hand wherever you are and speak to the Lord. He's here today. Jesus is in the room. It could be your child, it could be your son, it could be your daughter, it could be your job, wherever, whatever it is, this is your time. This is your time. Death is coming back to life. Death situations are coming back to life. This is your time. This is your time to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. This is your time to surrender to Him. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you. From our heart to God, we thank you. And Lord, we ask that any issue that has made us feel disappointed, even though we've not spoken out to you to say we've been disappointed, oh God, we lay such issues at your feet this morning. And we ask Jesus that you speak your word and let every dead end in our life receive life in the name of Jesus. We call forth every dead situation and we bring it to life in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, every soul who has lifted his or her hand to you this morning, we ask, oh God, that you bring healing. Bring healing. Bring deliverance, Lord. Bring healing. Bring joy. Bring In Jesus' name we are prayed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. In Jesus' name. Please, if, if one more thing before we, we hand over to the um, to the praise team. Maybe you, you just want to give your life to Christ. Let's make it bold now. Um, can you can you just step forward? Young people, you want to give your life to Christ. Whoever you are, you want, you just want to make that step of it. Can you, can you just step out, please? This is your time. This is your opportunity. Father, we thank you for everyone who is here today, who is born again, who has committed their life to you. We ask, oh God, take charge of our lives. That this week will be an awesome week for everyone. That your name will be magnified in our life and in all that we do. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you. Put your hands together for the praise team. Amen. Amen. God is never too late. Come on, make some noise. He's worthy to be praised. You got worthy. You are never too late. You are never too late. Lord.
Father God, we just want to thank you for this moment that we can come before you and give you all the praise and the glory that you deserve at this moment. God bless and keep us and strengthen us. May your face shine upon us and give us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.